One of the things that uh, may need to improve is our understanding of the benefit of repetitious teaching. I think sometimes uh, we say, okay, we've heard this, let's move on. And the answer is we're not moving on. This is important in the latter days to remain unspotted from the world. The answer has been given. So there's not some new thing that we need to be focused on. Moroni appeared to Joseph Smith four times. And in the culture of the church, we typically say, and he said the same thing four times. He didn't. There was a core portion of that message that was the same. But in the second, third, and fourth visitations, something was added. And we kind of neglect that. That highlights a very important aspect of repetitious teaching. The core may be the same, but every time we study about or listen to messages about the Sabbath day, the Holy Ghost will bring something additional, line upon line, precept upon precept. So some people may grow weary and think, well, okay, when's the new flavor of the month coming? And the answer is, this is, this is it. And it will be there forever. And there's great blessing and benefit in repetitious teaching if we have eyes to see and ears to hear. That's a wonderful understanding, Sister Burton. I was thinking kind of in that same direction, but I was thinking about, as, as we've emphasized teaching in the Savior's way, how we've looked, talked about a pattern of learning the doctrine and then living it and then sharing it, and how that might take us to the next level. I keep remembering King Benjamin's sermon and about the rising generation that didn't hear it, so the continual need to keep teaching it, even at the youngest ages, primary, even in nursery, we can start teaching these principles so that they are deep in their hearts as they grow. We're starting to get the principles down now, and how are we doing it, living it in our homes, and then maybe sharing it at church so that we can help each other build our homes to be what they ought to be on the Sabbath day. So that it's, it's, I think it's the practical modeling and the mentoring each other as we share those experiences. Thank you, Elder Asman. Uh, one of the items that came from this survey from the members as they were asked is that they still felt they had a lot of work to do at the home portion of what happens on the Sabbath day. That we've, we and they have made progress. They're very grateful, for instance, for the work with family history research that a lot of the families are able to do on the Sabbath day. But one of the reasons, Elder Ballard, we need to keep doing this is we still have a lot to do, especially on the home portion of what happens on the Sabbath day. Elder Holland? I think we do have a ways to go, <laughs> yet we have made progress, and I think our studies show that. But I think most people, not of our faith, are surprised that we're not more reverent yet in in our buildings, in our sacrament meeting. I do think we're, I do think we're getting better, but I think we have a ways to go. And uh, it won't ever be easy with the gregariousness and the sociality that we love. But if, if people could visit more in the foyers or uh, in the cultural hall or uh, after, uh, after classes or after quorums meetings, um, that's easy to say and not so easy to do. But I think that is one area that we are making headway, we're making progress, but I think we could make more. Just, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm taken with the idea that especially sacrament meeting is a time of worship. And the word worship, word worship carries uh, more to it, I think, than just even being reverent, even being quiet. There's an active part of worshiping there that I think we can still, we can still work on. Uh, we're creating the environment where that can happen, and I believe the sense of worship, the sense of honoring um, uh, our Father in Heaven and the Savior, having the Spirit, I think that can come. I think it is coming. This, this, is, not a, this is not a negative comment. It's just a kind of an exciting thought that maybe we can get there. Wonderful. Thank you, Elder Hall. Any other thoughts on need for improvement? Well, I, I would uh, just like to comment on something Elder Rasban said about um, we're seeing the bishop brick setting the tone more. And I think that helps what you're a talking lot. about. Helps a lot. When the bishop brick is, is sitting there ahead of time quietly, not visiting with one another or doing other things, but setting that tone, I think it encourages the members to remember to come in and sit and listen and to prepare. It would be wonderful if people made the distinction between 
when they get to church and when the meeting starts. Most people think that's the same hour. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not. You get to church before the meeting starts. Yeah. Thank you. I, I think we're even seeing the organists uh, uh, playing a little bit calmer in the process of that. It has a tendency to bring a sense of uh, calm and quiet and reverence to sit and listen. When the, when the organ sometimes, if we're not reverent, wants to keep going up to try to overcome the, the, uh, the no. conversations, <laughs> then we're in real trouble. So I think we're making progress. I'm, I'm thrilled with where we are. And I wonder if we could also introduce at this point, uh, we have a little work to do, I think, on fast and testimony, uh, Sabbath day at church. I think the bishops and the bishopric can teach in a loving and kind way what a fast and testimony is and what the purpose is and what it, even what a testimony is. That a testimony is an opportunity to share inner feelings of love for God and love for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's really not a time to talk about the trip that they had the previous week somewhere. But it, so we got a little more teaching, I think, and, and helping people to uh, appreciate that day so that the fast and testimony meetings is filled with the Spirit of God.